it is 4.30, no, almost five. Been on the road for a, a few minutes. We're uh, heading to Hotsboro, which is about 90 miles north of Dallas to uh, meet a breeder there. Then we're gonna go to Collinsville, um, I believe, and meet a breeder there. So our first meeting is gonna be at 9 a.m. Um, with Bates Great, Great Danes. And then the second one is going to be at one um, and that's going to be at Dates at the Ranch. So we're very excited. Um, we had to leave early because it's about um, four hours away and it's Father's Day. So one of the readers had, had lunch plans, which is completely understandable. All right, with my roommate Emily right here. Hi. We're gonna go um, do this thing. channel my name is Sarah the Great Dane Dame please don't forget to like comment subscribe and turn on the notifications for this channel I really appreciate you coming on here and watching um, so today we are going to talk about what to do if you are looking at getting a Great Dane specifically if you want a puppy I will do another video if you want um, a rescue so this is the first time that I really kind of went through this process by myself we had a Great Dane puppy when I was six we got from a breeder up in Iowa. I will totally name drop her name if you are up there at all. Her name is Gail Renz of Dynamite Danes and she is wonderful. I have known her for 20-ish years and she is 22 years. Um, I always ask her questions every few years if I need something. I might try to do an interview with her at some point. I'll talk to her in a while, we'll see. Um, but she's wonderful. Anyway, um, so after Teddy passed away, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know, well, I knew I wanted a puppy and I knew I wouldn't be able to not have a dog for a while. So I personally know that when I'm struggling, I need something to look forward to. I need something to focus on, I need something to do. Some people need time to grieve and that's totally fine. Some people have sworn off Danes. They've said that these, these are the most heartbreaking breeds that they've ever owned, which I totally understand. For me, I needed something to focus on. I needed something to train. I needed something to work on. I love training dogs. So, I want to start off as a puppy. Um, Teddy was a rescue, and I will go into more detail about that later. But he had a lot of issues, and I needed a dog, or I want a dog this time that I can train from scratch. That I can, and everything about this dog will be on me. And from like choosing it and personality traits and its parents and everything to environmental factors as well. So um, that's kind of how I decided that I wanted a puppy. Uh, the wait time is the most excruciating. This has been a long time coming. It's been like a month. It's not been that long, but I'm. It feels like a long time. So. Um, Anyway, I'm gonna talk to you about kind of what I did. So I went online, I started looking up Great Dane breeders pretty close to me. I didn't want too far out, somewhere in the state of Texas because I am based in Austin. And there aren't too many like right in my vicinity. Most of the breeders that I found were like four-ish hours out. Um, so I found several up north of Dallas. I found one in Nacogdoches. Um, and I found some other ones a little bit farther out. One thing to do and I highly recommend doing, which is what I did, is go through, look at the websites, look at the Facebook pages, look at all the information that you can and kind of make a list. Also look at price points. Great Danes can be priced anywhere from, depending on the breeder, like 800 bucks 
to like 3,000. It's insane. Um, a lot of that has to do with show quality, like dogs that have um, show champions in their line. A lot of that also has to do with whether they are European Great Danes or American Great Danes. Uh, European Great Danes, real quick, tend to be, um, they're bigger, they're stockier, based out of Europe for the most part. They look a little bit more like a Mastiff. Um, and this is a picture of one right now. And then um, American Great Danes tend to be leaner, slicker, a little bit more elegant, narrower head. Um, and that they also tend to be, you know, not as expensive. Europeans often are imported. Um, so that adds to, you know, money. So anyway, um, I went through and I looked online and I looked at like prices and websites and all the stuff that I wanted. I knew what I was looking for and I made a list. Now, I really, really, really want a blue Great Dane, which is like the grayish kind. I have wanted one of these my entire life and I've never owned one. And so that was something that I was looking for. I could not find one in the vicinity around me. Now, you can ship dogs, like breeders can ship them. Um, and I honestly do whatever's best for you. For me, I highly recommend being able to visit the breeder and being able to visit the uh, living conditions of the dogs. A lot of breeders do this strictly for the money, obviously making a profit, I don't have a problem with. But if you do this where you're a backyard breeder, where they're throwing out way more litters than you can possibly take care of, sustainable, like sustainably, then I like that. I don't want my dogs growing up like in a garage somewhere, um, unless you know what I mean. Like I want them to be a part of the family, uh, which is hard to do with you know twenty gradients or however many you have um, in your breeding program. So um, I also didn't want like a backyard breeder, which is a lot of what that is. So um, I wanted them to be bred for personalities like. The biggest and then health slash confirmation is another big thing but i went through i made a list and i just started calling people um it used to be something that was very hard for me to do because i have some anxiety but i was so motivated that i got it done so i called four three places three places um and started talking to all of them and i had compiled a list um one of the one of the questions was obviously like when is your litter going to be due or your next litter? Like what litters are you expecting in the future? Because a lot of times what they've got on their website is not what they're actually expecting. Um, it depends on the heat cycle of their females and when they think like that breeding time is going to come around. And then that also 63 days later when they think that they're going to have a litter. And then two months later when they think that they will be able to go home. So one thing that like my mom always said growing up is that she did not want to house train a dog in the winter. Not that big in Austin or Texas-ish, but in the Midwest, that's awful. Especially if you live in an apartment, and we'll talk about, I, Danes are great apartment dogs, that's not an issue. Uh, but like, it's, <laughs> house training a dog in the winter is unpleasant. So I went through and I made a list and I asked questions about like, um, the colors that they're expecting and the parents, tell me about the parents' personalities and um, the, the, uh, where they're located and all that stuff. And then I also asked, I had a weekend that I was like, when can I come visit? And they gave me this weekend, not this weekend, but a weekend that I could come visit. And I scheduled, I wanted to schedule them all at one time. Now my roommate wanted to come with me. I was like, great. So we did a road trip up to a little bit north of Dallas. We went to um, two breeders up there and visited one and she was great. I don't really have a lot to say about her. She keeps her dogs in a kennel outside. Now it is air conditioned, it is heat. It was kind of sad because it was raining. So I didn't get to see, spend a ton of time there. Um, I didn't get any bad vibes, but, um, and they were also 100% European, which I didn't have a problem with. That's kind of what I was looking for originally. Um, and she did have blues, which I really wanted, but um, her prices were a little bit more expensive than what I was looking for. It was gonna be on the high end of my range. Um, and it just, it, for me, I think you have to go a lot on feel. And so I wasn't um, in awe. And so then I went to a second place 
and we went and they live in a 40 acre ranch. They have horses, they have sheep, they have a bazillion dogs, all of which live inside. Um, they have like geese that were running around and we got there and as soon as we pulled up, like, um, Tim comes walking outside and says hi. It's like the middle of Corona and shakes my hand, which was wonderful because I haven't had human interaction in so long. Um, and he was like, come on in, you know, like, they had puppies on the ground at that point, not any that I would have been able to have because they were all sold. But, um, and I just sat down and I had a list of questions compiled to go through them uh, with. Now, I was there for four hours uh, and they were wonderful. And they answered all of my questions and I got to with, play with puppies and I got to see the dogs and they were very well behaved. They were very happy. They were very taken care of. I asked them about um, the lifespan of the dogs and how long they've been doing it, all this stuff. So I'm going to kind of go through the questions that I asked, um, these breeders and I highly recommend that you have a list, something like this, when you talk to the breeders, whether it's on the phone or in person. For me in person it was very helpful because then I, I kind of get the vibe of them. Also for me, I really want to be able to have a relationship with my breeder. I either want to be able to have their puppies later, or I want to be able to call them if I have any issues, or like in this case, they're just north of, north of Dallas, which is actually kind of nice. I drive up that way whenever I'm going back home to Iowa to visit my parents. And so like, it would be great if I could just stop at some point and be like stop by for an hour and you know let the dog my my baby play with the you know the other dogs so questions that i have i asked about deposit and waitlist info um now some play some people expect deposits before there are puppies on the ground just like as soon as pregnancy is confirmed and here's why you shouldn't do that now i ended up placing a deposit with a lady previously she said that they were expecting a litter um and mama was huge and they were expecting a litter she showed me like the x-ray and they were she counted 13 but she saw, saw thought another breeder sorry another breeder saw 16 puppies and so she was like i've already got six deposits that's there's gonna be plenty to go around and the deposit was low it was like 250 and i was like perfect so I sent her a deposit, I had asked her, I was like, well, if I don't like get the dog that I want, or if I don't get a male, because I really wanted a male, like, what's your policy? She goes, you get your money back. Perfect. So I sent her my money. The puppies were born. And I don't know what happened between 13 and 16, but somehow at some point she told me they were only expecting 10, which is still fine. And then nine were born, three were still born, which is a lot. That's not good. Um, this is nothing about them, it's just, Usually expect one stillborn, there were three. And then, um, so they only have six puppies. Um, so I asked her kind of what to expect about that. And she goes, cause I didn't have, I didn't know what was gonna happen. And she goes, well, we can go ahead and keep your deposit. And if somebody backs out of this litter, obviously we first percent contact. I said, okay. So I kept my deposit with her. Um, and then I, anyway, so that's why you don't put <laughs> deposits on you really shouldn't, if you can, not put a deposit on a puppy until they are born. Um, be on a wait list. So I asked um, about deposit questions, asked about personalities of the parents, like what can I expect from their puppies? Um, if you meet them, if you meet the parents of the puppies, like you'll get a pretty good idea. Um, I know the standard Great Dane personality. I know what I'm looking for in a dog. Um, so that's that. I asked about health guarantee. Some people, and oh, contracts. They, a lot of them have contracts, go through the contracts if you can on the website or ask what the contract, um, what all is involved in the contract. A lot of contracts will say things like, um, the biggest thing and definitely something that should be in the contract is like, if for any reason you cannot keep this dog, that the dog will end up with a breeder and not at a rescue or a shelter or neglected or whatever. Like the dog will always go back to them. Um, some other ones are in depth. Like, have you ever had a great day before? What are your qualifications? What's your money situation? What's your job situation? Um, which isn't great for me now. I don't have a job, um, COVID, but, um, <laughs> so anyway, that's a lot of that. How does that work? Um, this contract for this puppy that I'm going to be getting actually says that they microchip them, the breeder microchips them, and it has her contact information. That is not my favorite thing, and I told her that just because I keep my dogs, I keep my dogs from birth, or like from the time I get them to death, 100%. Um, 
if my dog gets out, I don't want them calling her four hours away because like, what's she gonna do? Um, however, I did talk to her about that and she goes, well, what we have done is we, there's not a secondary contact information, but there's a secondary um, contact information for like a vet information. So they said they put them on there. I may talk to a vet and see if there's kind of another way around that or to double microchip them, we'll see. Uh, but I did meet the breeders and she's always accessible by her phone. So it's not something that I'm crazy worried about. Um, I also don't lose my dogs. Um, I mean, I have before, but it's, it's not something that I'm the most terrified of. So anyway, that was kind of that. Um, I asked about the dog's living situations. How does it work with whelping? Are they whelped in the house? Are they whelped with a person, um, with them? That's kind of been pretty common that I've seen is like they're whelped in a bedroom and then they live inside and then they eventually, as they get older and they are more capable, they are... Um, introduced to the outside world. Some breeders are great and they will start crate treating them. Some breeders will start potty training them as best as they can, um, which is really kind of help, helpful and, and sweet. Um, I want them to have a ton of human interaction. My sister's dog, granted it was Boxer, but my sister's dog is like, when I talk about horses, I say bomb proof, like a bomb can go off and their horse will be fine. That's what my sister's dog is. He is the calmest thing on the face of the earth. Not that he doesn't get excited, but like nothing startles him. Um, and the breeder would like go around with pots and pans, like clanging them around the puppies. And so they're just kind of desensitized to noises, like not scared of thunder, not scared of, you know, fireworks, nothing. Um, I also asked what the puppy comes home with. Um, not a big deal. I was just curious. Like, do they come home with a collar? Do they come home with a bowl? Do they come home with a leash? Do they come home with puppy food? They need to come home with puppy food because even if you're gonna feed them something different than what the breeder's feeding, you need to be able to introduce that slowly so that you don't upset their stomachs. Danes are notorious for having China stomachs and they can get super sick. So they need to come home with puppy food. Um, you know, they come home with like a pedigree, which if you're gonna get an AKC registered dog or a CKC, I think that's what that's called. Canadian, whatever it is. I always get AKC. Um, if you're if you're gonna register them, they need to come home with pedigree. Um, and then a lot of times, a lot of breeders come, like send them home with toys and blankets and or a toy or a blanket or something smells like the them or you know the mom, so that um, you know they're not so sad because they will be sad for a couple of days. They're gonna be alone and scared and in a new place. And um, I mean, I've been homesick, so I can imagine what that's like. Um. Yeah, so I already talked about uh, if they have any trading started. Also, most of these, very few of these are deal breakers, but like I want to get the big picture of what I'm getting when I'm getting somebody's puppy. Um, as for health tests performed on the parents. Now, interestingly enough, I had different breeders say different things. I had some breeders be like, yes, we health test every dog, definitely hips and heart, sometimes eyes. Um, I had other breeders be like, well, honestly, we don't because you can have a test say one thing one day and it'll change the next. So, food for thought. Um, although, if you do meet the parents, check for, check their hips. Watch their hips. Watch for hip dysplasia. Um, hip dysplasia is pretty obvious. Um, the butt is usually higher than the rest of the body and they walk funny. Um, so, the, I mean, the parents should have good confirmation even if they don't have that in test form. Um, requirements for getting a puppy, I kind of talked about with the contract, um, but some contracts are crazy in depth. And then like with where I'm getting a puppy, they were just like, nope, that's fine. Just, you know, we just want to make sure that our dog's going to a happy, healthy home. Um, I asked how long they've been breeding and also along with that, like the longevity, average longevity of their puppies or their dogs. Now that that's going to tell you a ton and it's not guaranteed, but, um, through that, um, I also, I don't know if I mentioned it, a health guarantee, um, in writing, some say yes. I actually had one say that they don't offer that in writing. Um, it's really hard to prove specifically if something was genetic or like food related or whatever. Um, but make sure that you have a really good working relationship with your breeder because if something happens to your puppy at like two or three, a lot of times they're willing to work with you. They either give you a puppy for free or like heavily discounted. 
if something happens to your dog. Um, I asked for what they breed for, um, specifically like health, personality, confirmation, um, some um, do it for show, it's so like all that stuff. And then um, I always ask what they feed their pups. Um, you have to be careful with Great Danes and puppies. You need to not feed them too much because if you feed them too much, something with too much protein, a lot of times puppy food has a lot of protein, then they grow too really fast and then they have issues with their hips and their joints later on. Don't do that. Research what to feed your um, puppy before you feed your puppy. Um, so those were most of my questions. If you have anything that you would like to add or um, any questions for me, please let me know. I will also um, add a little bit of the footage and pictures and stuff from when I went and visited these dogs in other areas. Oh yeah, um, so the place that I ended up putting a deposit down for a puppy and um, where my puppy's coming from is called Danes at the Ranch. They are located in Collinsville, um, Texas, which is like just north of Dallas. They, uh, it is a ranch run by Tim and Connie West and they are amazing. I love them. I've talked to them like four times on the phone. Um, when I had originally inquired about a puppy, they said that they had a waiting list of 20 people at least. And then I called again a week before the dogs were due and they said that it had gone up to 30 and she quit taking names. So, um, and that's very fluid. Like it can go up and down. People put their names on a wit list, then they get another dog or they lose a job and then they change their mind and whatever. So, um, they told me that I was going to be in the top because of my interest and they knew who I was and they knew that I was going to, um, take care of the dog. So the day the puppies were due July 14th, and that came and went and nothing happened. I also felt like they were kind of meant to be my dog. Teddy's birthday was on July 15th. And my first dog, Dane's name was Raven. Um, and she was in the house when I was born. My parents' first great Dane. And so, um, and the mom of the slitter's name was Raven. So she's kind of felt meant to be. And I um, was like on my phone glued they told me kind of when they thought they would try to send a message around but like 5 and 7 p.m when everyone was home and so i was talking to my friend angie and i was like if this was when, um the 16th i was like if i don't hear anything by today they are getting a phone call tomorrow because i'm losing my mind i am so stressed and i was just a bundle of nerves and everyone was texting me going have you heard anything have you heard anything and i was like i will let you know i swear as soon as i hear something so um i got a text message and i was like shaking and i didn't know what to do and i texted them i was like I'm absolutely in. I want a boy or a male. Um, can I send my deposit? And they were like, done. So I sent my deposit in and then they texted me, they go, do you want black or fawn? I was like, I don't know. I had kind of made peace with either of them. I grew up with a bunch of black Great Danes and Teddy was a fawn. So I don't, I honestly think I would have been fine with either. Um, and we like at one point flipped a coin and finally I just texted her. I was like, hey, can I call you and talk to you? She was sure. So I called her and she was like, congratulations. And I said, no, congratulations to you. They had 12 puppies, one dies. So they had 11 out of this Great Dane that's like on the smaller side, which is just amazing. Um, and they're all healthy. And they said that, um, you know, I want, so I was like, I want to get your point of view. Like, where am I on the wait list? I was number five. Um, they had somebody who already wanted one black male and somebody who wanted one black, or sorry, one fawn male. And so I would have been somewhere kind of in the, um, there were three black males and four fawn males. So that kind of helped tip my point a little bit toward the fawn because then I would have had a pick of two out of four instead of one out of, th or sorry, two out of three. Um, so that was helpful as well. Um, and I called Nass and she was like, oh my gosh, they're all amazing. But the fawns, she was Sarah, the fawns are so pretty. And as soon as I heard her talk about them, I just kind of like knew exactly what she was gonna say. And um, I knew that that was kind of where she was leaning. So I went ahead and said, yep, put me down for a fawn. And uh, they are a week old today. Uh, picking is at two to three weeks and I'll probably do a video right around that time. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for more.